Are you a nine to fiver that is counting the days to payday? Or are you going to be one that just gives yourself more paydays? On this week's episode of the Aid to Assets podcast, my guest is going to tell us how she started creating her own paydays so that way she wasn't worried about when her job, when that payday came around. I am so excited for you to hear from this investor as she talks about how she started her journey as 21 years old, flying all the way from New York to Atlanta to get her first investment property. And this year, she is on track to become a millionaire. You don't want to miss this episode of the Aid to Assets podcast. Welcome to the Aid to Assets podcast, the ultimate podcast for aspiring real estate investors. I'm your host, Tiffany Watson. Join me as we discuss real estate investing for nine to fivers. We'll talk about everything from money mindsets and property ownership and different strategies you can use to invest in real estate. I want to empower investors, especially those of us who are working full time, who want to navigate the world of real estate, uncover the secrets to building wealth, generate passive income to achieve financial freedom. Equip yourself with resources from experts, practical tips, and step-by-step guides on how to kickstart your real estate journey. We'll also hear from nine to fivers who started to build their own portfolios, what they did and how they did it, so you can do it too. Tune in and transform your main job into your biggest silent investor in your real estate investment business. This is your Aid to Assets. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another amazing episode of the Aid to Assets podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Watson, and here I get to interview current and former nine to fivers who have made the jump into real estate investing so we can hear about their strategies and their successes so you can do it too. And y'all, I am so excited about my guest today. I'm gonna go ahead and let you know, you're not ready for this conversation. Get your notebooks. Y'all know how we do around here note takers or move makers go ahead hit that like and subscribe button share this with someone that needs to watch this because y'all we about to get the tea on all things real estate and so i can't wait for you to hear more so okechi hi how are you today hi tiffany i am good thank you so much for inviting me to your podcast and for um allowing me space to speak with your community absolutely so before we even get into all the good stuff i we like to start our show with receipts so people know why they need to be listening hitting that like and subscribe button so tell us about your real estate portfolio what how many doors how many properties and how long have we been in this real estate game so far I've been in the real estate game since I was 21. I have five properties right now, uh, mostly uh, duplexes, and there are nine doors in total. My portfolio generates over $100,000. I believe it's one forty-four, $144,000 in revenue annually as well. Y'all, listen, period. Okay, so for y'all telling me that we can't find duplexes, I don't want to hear it. And you also, you still working a nine to five as well as being a real estate investor and have an amazing brand as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I decided to invest in real estate because let's face it, your job is your first investor. That's where you, you're you going to get your first funds to um, start your journey. So I obviously started putting the money away. And girl, before that, of course, we all went through that phase of, you know, spending monies on anything and everything and just just spending until you realize that, hey, I need to start building myself. I need to start I need to start creating my own life out of outside of my job. So at first for me, because along the line, you know, your reason for wanting to do these things change. Your reason for wanting to to invest in real estate might change. For me, I think at first it was just growing up, moving here, and then realizing how, how different the system was. I mean, I grew up in a culture where women got kicked out of houses that they had turned into homes. And I told myself that that wasn't going to happen to me. So that was the first reason why I started investing in real estate. And I bought my first at 21. Fast forward, you know, by my second, third property, I was like, wait a minute. I saw people lose their jobs. I saw, I saw the effect that it had on people. 
people. And I'm like, the way co- uh, corporate has us all in a chokehold, like people lose their jobs and just lose their sense of purpose, lose their sense of how they do. And, and then they get into this slump where it takes a while to like get back out. And I didn't want a job to have to be in control of how I live, how I earned. Besides, like we were already talking you can't pass down that job. You cannot pass down the job. Job security is a myth. It's not, you're not secure. If you've been li- you know, listening to the news recently, companies have laid off, tech companies have laid off every, you know, a lot of their staff. Um, Macy's has announced that they're closing down stores. You know, we don't have pensions anymore. You know, even the 401k, some companies even till today don't offer a 401k or don't even offer you a match. So let's, you know, look into that. And then I'm like, you know, maybe it's best to create an asset type that wasn't so directly tied to my job. And real estate was that asset. Real estate was the two in one. Real estate was the side hustle that would allow me earn more without working round the clock. You see, that's the thing. America, if you're not careful, America is going to keep you working round the clock. You could be working round the clock in two ways. One way you're working around the clock to make ends meet, right? And then the other way is where you're earning enough money, but somehow you're just in this perpetual state of constantly working because you you can't even go on vacation. I mean, if you have that type of job, because you, here you are, when it was uh, back in the Blackberry days, you know, here you are on, on vacation and you're still on your Blackberry. You still have your, your laptop. You're still working. So you're just in a constant and perpetual state of working and stressing yourself out. So, yeah, you're not working so hard to make ends meet like the other person on the other end, but you're still working your butt of 16 hour days, nine hour days. I live in New York and, you know, most of us who live, let's say, on Long Island, you take the train to the city, to Manhattan, and you see everyone. You could be coming back from work or, you know, And at 10 p.m., 9 p.m., people are still in their suits. So they left their homes since 7 in the morning, 6 in the morning, hopped on a train, got to work, spent all these hours at work only to go back. And again, you, and then at the end of the day, when you want a vacation, you still have to get approval to get get your two weeks, your little two weeks (laughs) off. Um, and then you see, like, you just have no control of your time, of your life. And I told myself this wasn't going to be me. I needed to carve out my own space. I needed to have more control of my time. I needed to be in a position where I was counting down more. I was counting down to payday into counting more paydays. Come on. Without hold on. Having hold to- on. Wait a minute. No, no, no. You're not going <laughs> to run past that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh-uh. Run that back. You were counting. Come- Say that one more time for the people, just in case. <laughs> I wanted to stop counting down to payday and start counting more paydays without having to work round the clock. And real estate was that for me. I felt I don't that in work my spirit. Too hard. I don't. <laughs> I don't work. I don't work weekends. I don't. You know. I don't. And it's it's the hard work I've done that has gotten me here. And this is. I've been on the other side of the fence. I've been on the side where you're counting down, where you have the two, you know, two paychecks in a month, and it's, you know, now I get paid multiple times in a month. And trust me when I say. Real estate is worth every risk, every risk, all this, whatever stress you think you're going to get, real estate is worth it. Okay. Y'all, did you see why you need to hit that like and subscribe <laughs> button and get these nose bags ready? Okay. So there's so much that I can unpack here. And so your story, I think is so incredible. So I want to take us back to the beginning. You mentioned that you were 21 years old when you bought your first property. So one, even just the idea of you just got out of teenage years and we're already becoming investor. How did we get to that moment? What led you to do that? Oh, so many things. It first started from just realizing that, like I said, I, co- I come from a, 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 a culture where women weren't allowed to own stuff. Women, you know, you were, it, it was kind of drummed into you that you shouldn't acquire anything. You shouldn't go for wealth. The man should be wealthy. Just, you know, simmer down. The man is supposed to have the money and then you're supposed to come in. Um, Women also got kicked out. Of course, that puts you in a position of financial dependence 
on a man. So I watched women get kicked out of houses they had turned into homes. And I said, this is a crazy way to be, to have to, you know, be trying to figure it out with little kids and just struggle. And I told myself that that wasn't going to happen to me. Fast forward to moving here. And then I saw that the system was different. Oh, and also back home, at least for me, <clears throat> when people own their homes, they owned outright. So you have to save up for years, like such a long time in order to be able to buy your house in cash. So coming here and realizing that, wait a minute. So if a house is, is worth or they're asking $100,000, all I needed to do was bring a fraction, that money. I didn't have to bring the full $100,000 because a bank was going to lend me part of the money. I was like, okay, so how can we do this? Where can we find properties? Where are properties cheaper? Fortunately for me at the time as well, and I wanted to acknowledge this, it was in a time of no money downs or no money down <clears throat> properties. So I was able to scrape the closing costs and everything else that I needed. My credit was decent. I think it was about 720 at the point. And then I flew from New York to, I was looking because obviously New York was even still relatively expensive for me at the time at 21. And then I looked out of states and I chose Atlanta. I was Googling online, found a guy online. He owned a bunch of properties. He was an agent. He was like, you know, you need to come and see these properties. No matter how we talk about it online, if you don't, you know, travel to see it, then it's of no use. So I hopped on the plane as much as I didn't like flying. And I knew no one in Atlanta at the time. I knew nobody, no, but now I have a ton of friends over there. I knew no one. I didn't tell anyone of my journey, but flew in there Memorial Day weekend and yeah, went to see the property. You know, it was, it was crazy. He showed me a bunch of co-ops and condos and, and I, I remember feeling very unimpressed. And then I said, is this it? He said, well, there's one more, but it's, it's kind of outside this area and it's not, um, it's not, you know, within your price range. I was like, let me go see it. Let's go see it. And we saw it. The moment we got to the front of the house, I was like, this is my property. We walked in, beautiful home out in, in Georgia, in Conyers. Uh, what is it? A three bedroom, two baths with a, you know, a semi-finished basement. And the rest is history. I told him I was going to go apply to a lender and, you know, get back to him. That was May of 2007 by July, we closed on the property. And that was that. Wow. So wait a minute. Hold on. Because you were 20. I'm trying to imagine 21 year old Ogechi, right? You're in New York. How long had you been in America when you were 21? I had been about three and a half ish. Okay. Three and a half ish years. Okay. Yeah. I started working. I came, started working right away. So I was, I was doing the best that I, I could. Again, there was a lot of grace around that period, right? Because I, I don't want us to, uh, there was a lot of no money down. A lot of lenders were willing to finance you. Sadly, those opportunities have gone. Still, that's not going to change the fact that there are still opportunities now. Now, because I don't want, I know how we can listen to something and say, well, that was then and this is now. If you go on my page, there are still properties for un under a hundred thousand. There are still properties that, you know, there are business loans that you can, you can take out, you know, where you are not judged. Your, your personal finances aren't really considered. The finances of the property is what gives you um, the loan. If the property makes money, then yes, you're able to purchase it. So I want, I don't want us to get too stuck on, okay, well, nobody's giving, you know, 0% uh, financing today. You, you can still buy real estate today. I'm on the contract right now as we speak. And we're going to get to them contracts. We're going to get to that in a second. But, okay, so 21 years old, you've been in the country for three and a half years, and you decided you wanted to buy real estate based off of what you had seen and in your home country and the difference we're here, you can only bring a fraction of what is needed for this house and you'll be able to own it through partnering with the bank. So we get on a plane to Atlanta. What was it that was like, I'm going, I want to know two things. One, why was it at that particular moment I need to become an investor? And two, even though I live in New York, I found this realtor in Atlanta and I'm going to go and potentially invest in Atlanta. How did we get there? New York was very expensive at the time. 
I mean, ain't nobody buying no $300,000, you know, <laughs> two fifty, dollars you know. So at, Atlanta was, was relatively cheaper. It was also warmer. I mean, it's a warmer place. We love a good it's, Atlanta. The taxes yeah. Are, we, yeah, the taxes were lower. You know, the people were nicer. Um, everything. And I, I, I think I was also watching a lot of MTV <laughs> at the time. So I picked up on no, seriously. Tell the truth. I love Shout it. I love it. <laughs> um, so I picked... I picked up, of, uh, you know, on the fact that a lot of the entertainers were from there. You know, you have Bow Wow, you have Sierra, you know, a lot of people were from, Usher's from there. So I was like, hmm. This is so, so maybe, 2007. I, mean, I love it. Maybe, <laughs> just, I'm telling you, like, I was a kid, you know, I was like, okay, maybe there's something there. Then I, you know, I just started to research and I, I was like, how's this for sale? We didn't, you see, that's, this is the advantage we have now. We didn't even have Zillow and real t- like the way that they are right now. We didn't. So right now you actually have more structure. You have more information at, at your fingertips. Do you know how many times uh, uh, the street view has, has saved me? Imagine finding a property and then going there only to realize that there's a cemetery right next to the property you know, so you got you to pull up that street view before you go anywhere. Um, back then, we didn't even have that. So that was such a risk that I took because what if it wasn't, you know, what if the area was complete, I don't know, zoned out, found this guy and he would probably had great SEO because he was like the first thing that popped up. Turned out he was an agent and an investor himself. So he owned a bunch of properties and he was just looking to sell. So as an agent, real estate investor, he was like, um, that sure, he has properties, he can help me out, but I would have to to visit them because no matter what we did, there was, I mean, it was so um, uncommon at the time to buy properties. It was so uncommon at the time to buy properties like sight unseen. Like that, that's not, you know, times were kind of different back then. So I said to him, okay, not a problem. And please, if you're, if you're really young, you don't have to, do this place because I do recognize that I took a a, a huge risk. Anything truly could have happened out there. You can go with someone. I didn't tell anyone at the time. And I didn't tell anyone because, because Tiffany, I didn't want anyone to distract me from buying because at the time, and and this is a backstory to that, to the reason why. At 1920, I wanted to go to Harvard. You know, I wanted to go to Harvard. So I told someone around me at the time that this, you know, these are my intentions with school. And the person just laughed at me. Why do you think Harvard's going to take you? What, you know, you, you just got here, like, just why? And the way they, their remark and the way they behaved, Tiffany, I never applied. I never applied to Harvard. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Would Harvard have, have accepted me? Maybe, maybe not, but I'll never know. I will never know now. So that immediately derailed me. And when it came time to purchase the property, I didn't even share this with anyone because I didn't want anyone to remind me, oh, you're a woman, you're too young, you should wait till you get married. A woman isn't supposed to buy a home until, you know, as, a, as an unmarried woman. You know, I, I just didn't, I had to shut the noise out because I realized, and, and, to you, if you're listening to me right now, you've probably wanted to buy or invest in real estate for the longest. And you're, you're, you're having people's opinions stop you dead in your tracks. People telling you how much work real estate is, how, how tenants are going to frustrate you, how you're never going to get paid. But that's all, everything. See, you, you acknowledge a risk and then you figure out ways around it. You don't let fear of the game keep you from striking out. You never let fear of the game keep you from striking out. You gotta go because guess what? Every time or every year you keep pushing back your real estate goals, it's costing you. And no matter what, don't forget that so many people are real estate investors today. They are real estate investors. Yes, there are horrible stories out there. I'm not going to deny that or sugarcoat that. Real estate is some work. But when you have the right systems, when you have the right knowledge, when you have the right information, when you have the support that you need, I promise you, you can succeed. So many people are succeeding with real estate. I'm one of them. So get right in.
Get right into it. it. Um, I love it. In the comments, y'all, get in the game. In the comments, y'all, put get in the game. Get in the game. Get in the game. Okay. So don't let fear be back. Yes. And that fear is so real for so many people. And so I'm curious because you, okay, so you talked about one, we had to shut, shut out the noise. You couldn't let anyone distract you. So once you did it, what was, how did you figure out, okay, I got this property in Atlanta now. I live in New York. What was that like getting it rented out, getting it ready? Did you have to do any renovations? Talk to us a little bit about that. Okay, I didn't have to do a lot of rentals, um, thankfully. And this is why Atlanta is going to probably, or the people of Georgia, Atlanta is going to always have a special place in my heart. See, the guy who sold me the property, he was very helpful for me. He knew that I didn't live in the area. So he found my first tenant. He, you know, verified her, you know, did everything for me and practically like set me up for that. So I didn't have a lot of rentals to do at the time, maybe just the paint job. It wasn't, it wasn't much to work on, but he helped me and he, you know, ran the background check on the tenant, got the rent, got the lease, did everything for me and situated me and also explained things to me, you know, how certain things should work. And I, and he practically helped me set up at first. I love it. Having a good realtor on your team is key. Key, key. Very key. A good realtor is worth their weight in gold. You know, a lot of people, again, good experiences, bad experiences, and everybody has their own experiences around the realtor. But a realtor, just like you, Tiffany, you're an investor as well, and you're you're a realtor. I don't think a lot of people understand the value because you have properties. You're an investor yourself, so you know how things should be. And guys, if you're listening to this, please reach out to Tiffany as well, you know, for your real estate needs because there's she's she's valuable she just from the perspective that she owns properties herself right there she'll get you together love that thank you okay so let's switch gears now so you got the property in Atlanta we got a tenant in there we're feeling good what what happened next how did we get these other doors so what happened next was thinking okay so my property in Atlanta is a single family property and I said to myself that's Again, this has to be divine. That's some type of risk because if the the tenant in that property decides to leave, then here you are with no income. So I figured you need to go for multi. You need to go. And a lot of people are probably, you know, the girls are going to get mad. You know, if you're going to start your real estate investing journey, don't waste your time with single family properties from a risk perspective and also from an income perspective perspective. Um, if you have the more properties you have on one land, meaning the more doors you have on one land, so a five unit, a six unit, the, the, the higher or the quicker you can grow your income. And also a lot of people underestimate or don't have a, a solid knowledge about numbers. You see a single family property that's, let's say, selling for $140,000. And then a duplex over there selling for $180,000. Well, you're going to say, well, um, you know, I I only have money for $140,000, but hey, what you're forgetting is that that two unit is probably going to get you more income. So for that $40,000 extra in the grand scheme of things, $40,000 is nothing. When you break it down into loan, Loan terms. I, I understand that forty. Don't don't think of it as forty. You have to come up with forty thousand extra. Don't forget, it's a loan you're going to take out. For that forty thousand dollars more, you're getting more. And if if you bought a single family for a hundred and forty, and you bought a duplex for a hundred and eighty thousand, you have essentially paid less for the duplex because if you divide it by two, you're really getting each unit for ninety thousand. Meanwhile, you bought a single family home for 140. So there's more value in going for the multi units first. You know, a lot of people get upset. They're like, no, you're going to make a lot of money on single family. Not quite. Again, you stand a lot of risk when that one tenant decides to move. If you have a three unit, a four unit, and one tenant moves, at least you still have the other doors occupied. It is almost rarely impossible for you to have your four units completely empty at the same time. 
Do you see what I'm saying? There's levels to earning money. There's, there's the profit. Rents came in. Did you make a profit? Yes. Or if you don't have tenants in the other place, well, you still have two tenants. You have a four unit and two tenants left. So now you have two tenants that are still there. Well, and they paid rent. Well, have they covered the mortgage? Even the goal is not to have any of your own monies, you know, coming out every month. So if you only have a single family property, you run the risk of having to supplement for the property almost every time you lose a tenant. Versus if you start off in, on the multi-unit properties, you can at least, at the very least, you break even. At the, even if you don't make your own money, you at least break even. So I tell people, start with the um, multi-unit property. If you're listening to me, skip the condos, skip the co-op, skip the single family. You're on a slow pace. Start off with the duplex, the duplex, the triplex, the fourplex. And you're, you're going to get more in return um, for your investment. Absolutely. I love that because I tell people regularly, why buy one door when you can buy four with the same loan? And so the multifamily exactly. between two to exactly. four, that's it. Like you are going through the exact same that's, process. Exactly. So why not maximize your journey? It's still the same paper. The, the paperwork you're going to submit for a single family property is the same paperwork you're going to submit for a triplex or a fourplex. So why not maximize your journey? Go start off strong, start off with the duplex. And every time I look at my spreadsheet, actually, and see that single family home, it's one less door that, you know, should I? <laughs> oh, that is so funny. <laughs> my one mistake. <laughs> That's well, still profiting. Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. You can't call that a mistake no, 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 if it's no, still no. making you money. No, 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 no. It's not. It's not. It's not a mistake. It's not. It's my first and my last, though. It's my first and my last. I yeah. never. I don't even look. I don't even look at it. No matter how pretty it looks on Zillow, I'm like, oh, cute house, and I move on to my multi-unit phone. Uh, 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 section. I don't. I, you cannot entice me. You, tr you you would have to sell me that house for free. That single family property for practically free for me to to accept it. I don't want it. I don't. You know. I don't mess with it. A lot of people on Instagram. You know. They tell you I bought a single family home for seventy thousand. I put forty thousand dollars in. So I'm all in one ten, and this is great. And that's great for them. But I'm. You know. In a different lane. I figured out my strategies. I want to do the least do the most with the least. So how, how do I put it? Try to do like, just maxim, maximize the effort. You got to maximize the opportunity that you have. Don't, you know, skip the single family, start off with the duplex, the triplex, the fourplex and go from there. I love it. I love it. So now you, so we started the duplex and I love that because you're so clear this is what my focus is. And so you mentioned starting out having to just kill the noise from other people's opinions about, could you do this? But now that skill never leaves you. Now it's keeping yourself focused and killing the noise on these other shiny things. There's so many ways to make money in real estate that people can, they can make themselves fearful or paralyzed because do I want to do a duplex? Do I want to do a single family? Do I want to do condos? Do I want to do... Sis says she's clear. If it's not multi-doors, I don't want it. And that makes it so easy to know if an opportunity is for you or not. Exactly. Exactly. Because a lot of people are distracted. They don't know what they want to do. Do you want to do a wholesaling? Do you want to buy turnkeys? Do you want to do a rehab? Should you start with a condo? Should I start... So all of these questions, no, no, no. Let's focus. Let's center. No, no, no single family properties, no co-ops, no condos. Just leave all of that alone. Focus on the multi-unit. When you decide to be a real estate investor, you also need to decide, do you want to go the turnkey route or do you want to go the rehab route? And sometimes it's a matter of preference for you because I've done rehabs now. I have two properties under contract. One is a, a turnkey, the other is a rehab. So, and all of this, you know, everyone who's going to go to my page, you can see um, all of that play out on my, on my page, but you need to 
decide for yourself. Do I want a turnkey property, a property that just probably needs a paint job, or do I want a property where I'm going to have to hire contractors, you know, put a new put a new plumbing system, you know, rewire the house, do the uh, fix the roof and all of that stuff. Sometimes it's a matter of preference, sometimes it's also a matter of how much you have to get into the game. How much do you have? You know, if you if you don't have a lot of money, you know, to get in to get started, then going the rehab route might be your your best option to get started. So again, strategy matters. Don't uh, don't don't. A lot of people listen to podcasts and they they watch the YouTube video and they 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 read a lot of books and all of that, and sometimes they still leave without the, what they have is scattered knowledge. What they have is knowledge that's all over the place. You have no structure, you have no strategy, you have no support. So you need to center and focus. Ask yourself, how do I want to get into real estate? I want to buy and hold, or I want to buy and flip, or I want to buy, fix, and keep it. Again, these are the questions you need to answer for yourself. But once you do, for the love of everything good, get into multi units. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. One of my mentors, he says that oftentimes, especially with like YouTube University and, you know, even platforms such as this, we love being able to provide the information, but many of us, we're being fed from too many buffets. And so we don't have a target because if I'm going to be a multifamily investor, that's my cuisine, multifamily only, that's it. But if I'm in the multifamily getting fed, if I'm getting fed with the apartment complexes, if I'm getting fed with single family, with fix and flip, I'm getting fed from too many buffets. And so I can't settle on one particular thing in order to see a win. Absolutely. Okay. That's no. the <laughs> Right. Absolutely. Now tell us where are these duplexes now? Because you started in Atlanta with the first one. Is that where you continue to invest or did you choose a different market? I chose a different market. I chose the New York area upstate. And there are so many, there are so many markets with duplexes. Um, you have Chicago, you have Ohio, you have so many areas have, because a lot of times people say, well, we don't know where these duplexes are. You got to search. They're there in Michigan, they're in Michigan, they're in Ohio, they're in Indiana, they're in um, Tennessee, they're in upstate New York, they're even here downstate New York. Multi-family uh, units, duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, they're everywhere. If your market or where you live, you can't find them, you're going to have to expand your search. What's the next, like now I live in New York, we have even connect the state of Connecticut. They have they have uh, triplexes, they have fourplexes, they have duplexes as, as well. I live in New York, and when we talk, sometimes we say the tri-state area. So the tri-state is New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. If you wanted to expand just a little bit, then you have the Philly area. If you wanted to expand a little bit more as well, you have Maryland. The point I'm trying to get to is when if you live in a state where it's either not affordable for you or your area doesn't have to do, you have to ask yourself, what's the next state to the north of me, to the south of me, to the east of me, to the west of me? What, where can I drive into? Connecticut is just a, you know, about a 45, one, and sometimes you hear the next state and it sounds so, it's not that far depending on, of course, where you, live, where you live. New Yorkers drive into New Jersey all the time. New Jersey folks drive into New York all the time. Uh, we drive into Connecticut all the time. So again, these things are not as complicated as we make it out to seem. What's the next state um, by me? Where did I go to college, you know, for instance? Where, you know, where did you go to college? Maybe there are duplexes there. Start off with a place that's familiar. Start off with a place that's next to where you live. Um, start off with a place that you, you know, you wouldn't have a problem traveling with. But there are properties out there today. Michigan has a lot of them. Ohio has a lot of them. Tennessee has a lot of them. Upstate New York has a lot of them. Where else? Indiana is also, you know, I've seen from the... I've seen and heard a lot of people have success over in the state of Indiana as well. So again, they're everywhere. Zillow, use your Zillow, use your um, your Trulia, use your Realtor app. Uh, what else? Redfin, LoopNet, if you wanted to go bigger, you know, for commercials, commercial residential properties as well. They're all 
types of apps today you have a more like tiffany back in the day i'm telling you like we don't even know the gold that because a lot of people try to make it seem like you know these properties are hidden and and they're somewhere buried deep and you gotta you gotta search deep all the properties i found have been on the mls just going to realtor.com going to trulia going to zillow it's not so hidden that nobody can find it unless they, they take you to some secret or send you some secret emails or something. No, back in the day, like you had to go to seminars. You had to go to those real estate seminars for like three days and they would give you like a list of properties. And by the time you left the bubble of the seminar, those properties were already gone. You couldn't even verify if they were, if they were on the market at all. And here you, you are, you've been dragged into a three day, $20,000 seminar and you have just addresses. You have no other information. You know, you're an agent. So you know those agent sheets that you guys, you know, have that, you know, has all the details, all the tea on the property. Well, you can Zillow, Realtor, Trulia. These are not just, but you don't just look at the, the, the property. They, there's a lot of information on there from the last person who, from the last time the property was sold, how much it was sold for, you know, some, some of them, if you're really lucky, you can actually see the before pictures. I've actually stumbled on quite a bit that had the prior picture. So you can tell if there's been work done on the property. I mean, all kinds of information we have today from neighborhood to whether it's a, it's in a flood zone, whether it's um, fire, you know, all like these websites, even street view, even distances between, you know, maybe where your property is to where other things are in the neighborhood. We have so much information today. You can get online and you can also set your search criteria. If you pick a state, set your search criteria to multi unit properties and it's going to it's going to come up. It's going to come up. There's so much information at our fingertips. I, oh, my goodness. And people don't even realize the access that we have. We take it for granted when we are able to participate in things like this that are on the side. We don't have to drive for dollars like that same list. You then had to go drive to that house and go look at, you know what I mean? We have so much information. So I love I love you. Thank you for sharing all of that. Now, it's really evident that you are very passionate about this and I'm curious as to, especially because you still work a nine to five today as you have invested in these properties. And so why this this platform is solely for that, for people who we are still working, but we know that one income is too close to zero. And so we are looking to figure out how we can build additional cash income streams for us. Why, in your opinion, does this matter so much? Why is it so significant for us to be able to do that? Well, it's important that you start putting your active income and transferring it into passive. As a W-2 employee, you are taxed the most. You're the one essentially carrying the entire country. If you are not finding ways to shield yourself, especially as a high income earner, as a high W-2 income earner and or as an unmarried high income earner and as an unmarried high income earner without kids man you are essentially working for uncle sam you are working to give the government your money and that is why you need to invest like tiffany i could give you 20 reasons to invest in real estate and i'd be getting warmed up and I'd just be getting warmed up at 20. You need to invest in real estate because real estate is the only is the only asset type that will take you out of the rent race and the rat race. So if you're a renter, you, you're, you need to secure yourself somehow. You need to have housing locked in. If you believe that you're going to keep renting and you're going to invest in index funds, I'm, I'm here to tell you, you cannot live inside your index funds. I'm here to also tell you, I mean, there was a time there were, um, what is it? Facebook was trying to do metaverse or AI verse or whatever verses, whatever verses you think you have, no matter what, you need a roof over your head. You need to secure your housing. You need to 
to lock in. So it's one of two things. Either you buy your own home and then keep investing in the stock market, that's fine. But this platform is for people who want to invest in real estate. If you're a renter, you need to start canceling out your rent. I hope what I'm saying is making sense. You need to figure out a way to get your rent back. So if you wanted to keep renting for a while, well, maybe because that's the lifestyle. Because I think a lot of people just think, oh, I'm, I'm going to buy my own home first and then get into real estate investing. No, you don't have to go that route. You can be a renter and a real estate investor. And that's what I was for years. I rented because it just it was just more convenient for me at the time. And then I invested in real estate as well. So your job you need to start transferring, thankfully, the, the tax code, because everything we do should be within the tax code. The tax code considers real estate as a business, as a passive income business, even though it's not entirely passive. You know, So you need to start transferring your active income into your passive income. And that's real estate. Real estate will shield you from paying, overpaying in taxes because you have depreciation, which you can, you, depreciation is so funny. Here you are, the, the tax code is like, okay, you have this property and, you know, for wear and tear. Meanwhile, your property is actually gaining value, but the government allows you to just deduct a certain percentage every year for 27.5 years. After 27.5 years, if you decide, even before then, to um, to sell your property, but you're afraid or you don't, not afraid, you don't want to pay taxes, you want to defer taxes, well, guess what? You can do a 1031 exchange. So you trade. it's like trading in your car. You trade in your property for one of more value and use the profits from the one that you already had and to, as down payment for the next one you're getting and you don't have to pay taxes. Real estate is such a shield. It's incredible. That's why they say 90% of millionaires have come from real estate investing. I know times have changed. I know we have, you know, the influencer and social media, but real estate is still a very strategic means to build your wealth. So you, you buy real estate as a nine to five earner so that you don't keep working round the clock to make ends meet. You want to start a side hustle? Buy real estate. You want to pay for your kids' college? Buy real estate. If you bought real estate now for them, you don't have to set up on any 529 plans. You don't have to run around. You, know, you don't have to do the most. You just pull funds from your property. If you want something you can pass down, you buy real estate. If, you, um, if you're trying to increase your net worth, you own real estate. Imagine... I saw a six unit property about a few months ago. It's a six unit and I kind of didn't, they were asking for a lot, but I would have also gotten a lot in return. And I was wondering how I was going to come up with a down payment for that. So I said, you know what, even if it came down to selling some stocks, I'm open to it. So I contacted a lender and, you know, I just kind of told him, see, I have interest in this property. What do you think? He's like, do you have equity in your homes? I said, yes, I have a ton of equity in, in your homes. And he said, well, you don't have to sell any stocks. We could just pull the equity from your homes to purchase. Like, I, I was like, what? He's like, don't, you wouldn't even have to come up with a single dollar. We just need to appraise your homes. If they appraise right, we'll pick two of your homes, two of your properties, and you know, use the equity from them to purchase the six unit. And I was like, that's incredible. And that's leverage. That's the power of real estate. That's the power of owning, of owning cash flowing assets, help you to buy more assets. Like I said, I could give you 20 reasons why real estate is the way to go. And Tiffany, I'd be getting warmed up. <laughs> y'all, are y'all taking notes? I just want to make sure y'all are taking notes. Again, if you have not hit that like button, go ahead and do that. Share this with someone because one, there's something, first of all, you talked about Uncle Sam and it's stressful. I am unmarried with no kids and he act like he is leading a department with me and I am confused about what meeting he led, what project he completed for me. And so that was the main reason why I decided that I wanted to invest in real estate. I was looking for a tax strategy because too much of my money was going and I am all for paying what I'm supposed to. I'm just not trying to leave a tip. 
I don't want to pay nothing extra than what I am required to because of the life choices I have decided to make and not be married or have kids right now. And real estate was an opportunity to be able to, to find that for me. While also, y'all, this is why this is so important. We, even if you're an influencer, an entrepreneur, whatever, you are actively working for that money. And so while we are young enough and we have the energy and we are able to, this is why I work as hard as I do because I don't have kids. So I can be active and put that into a more passive. Now, we're going to talk about that in a second. Real estate is not completely passive. So what, no matter what somebody told you on the internet, there is a little bit of work, a little bit of work, but it's, it's, it's passive. It's passive aggressive. Okay, passive It's passive ish. You know what I mean? Like it's passive ish, <laughs> but it's not going and working 40, 50, 60, 80 hours a week 50, nah, in order nah, to nah, get nah, your nah. paycheck every two weeks or, or whatever that may be. And so this is what is make the difference maker. We are looking to put our ass, our ass, active income into assets that can then pay for our future lifestyle. That's the game. That's the key. So let's talk a little bit about that because now you said, let me make sure I got it right. Five, is it five properties, nine doors? Nine doors. Yes. And I'm on the contract for two properties that are four units each. So eight more doors are coming in. (laughs) By the time, by the time this podcast airs, it you know I should be done. I definitely should be done. I just want y'all to know I host this show so I can meet dope people like her. Like this is why I do this. So you got to be sitting at fifteen doors and you yes. work a full time job. How you and Beyonce got yes. the same twenty four hours? Clearly. So tell me how. How do we manage all of this? Um, well, my properties are in the same state I live in. So there's that. It's easy for me to pull up. You know, I have also built my connections, built my relationships. I have um, people who go out to do work for me. You got to have you got to have numbers on your phone, child. You got to have an electrician. You got to you got to get into it with trades for trade people you know one of my tenants is actually a plumber by trade so sometimes he helps me out too you know um you got you got to build your network around your properties the wherever your properties are find the electrician find a plumber find a good handyman visit your property often if you see tr- you know a truck or a van with a number on the van you know let's say we do plumbing or something you better write that down Again, build your connections, build your relationships, but it's all possible. It's a, a lot of people tend to make it seem like, you know, something is always breaking at every second of the day. That's, that's not how it works. Um, visit your property, put yourself on a schedule. Maybe you're going to go out there twice, you know, maybe twice in a month, once in a month, you know, again, and have your people out there who can help you when or if you're not able to show up there mm-hmm. right away. Mm-hmm. Tell me about, so you mentioned the tradesman, which is so key and critical. And I encourage everyone, especially if you have trying to figure out what you want to do in life, pick up a trade. We are, there are such a need for more trades people. That's an A, I can't do that. And so that is a career that is not going out of style, that it can be very lucrative. So I want to put that out there, but tell me about your team. When you think of the top three, maybe top five people that needed to be in your phone in order to be a successful real estate investor, who would that be? Hey y'all, Tiffany here. Are you looking to purchase or sell real estate? As you know, I'm your aide to assets and I want to help you with all of your real estate endeavors. Whether you're local here like me in the Fayetteville, North Carolina area, I can then help you purchase or sell your next property. If you're looking to purchase or sell outside of North Carolina, let me know too. I can still help you. I have a team of agents all over the country that I can connect you with to partner on your next deal. Let's get to the closing table, y'all. We buy our way to wealth, whether that's buying right or selling better. Can't wait to hear from you. Click on the link in the bio if you want more information on how to personally work with me or an agent on my team. Talk to you soon. Well, my agent, first of all, that would be, (laughs) my agent's, you know, very helpful. Um, I would say my, the plumber, the the, my plumber, very, because my plumber is also an HVAC guy as well. So he, 
helps handle leaks and all of it. Fire can be, I'm sorry, water can be very destructive as, as quiet or whatever as it looks, water can be really destructive. And I would say my, between my electrician and my handyman, you see, I have a good handyman who's like, he's also good at a lot of little things together. So having him has been a blessing for me. And I have like, well, I actually have two. If he's not available, there's someone else I can call on my team. But the electrician, the plumber, the handyman, those are like the three people. And of course, your agent for when you, you know, you're ready to buy as well. But your, your electrician, your plumber, your handyman who can, you know, the more knowledgeable they are, the better it is for you. Because sometimes you might be lucky and get someone who's good at all of that at the same time. So you need, you need to have a general, just a handyman, someone who goes there, someone who checks, which I know you didn't ask, but a lot of people tend to ask, you know, property manager, property manager, you know, someone managing for you. Again, half and half. I don't really believe in them, at least not right now. For me, um, maybe as time goes on, things will change. Let's say if I owned uh, uh, 50 doors, like on one land, so I bought a property that's 50 doors. Of course, I'm going to get a manager. I don't want to handle 50 doors by myself, but you don't need to start out with a manager. Please get into the habit of going to see your own property. Get into the habit of managing your own stuff because it, this is one of the, the, the biggest expense you're going to have in your lifetime. You can't just hand it off to someone and just believe everything they say. Also, if your property manager sees that you, you never show up, you, you don't, you know, they know, my tenants know me. My tenants have my number. My tenants can call me. You know, they know the guy, the handy guy who comes in, but they also know me as well. So a lot of people just want to buy a property and just hand it off to a manager. And again, not to go back, when you start out your real estate journey, you do have to be strategic in the sense that you have to pick a market. And when you pick a market, try to stay there. So you don't want a situation where you have a property in Indiana, a property in Tennessee, a property in Milwaukee, a next one in Wyoming, the next, you're, so you're all over the place. Because for every property that's out in different places, you gotta find an, a handyman, an electrician, a plot, like you have to do the whole process again. My property, the, the property in Atlanta is the only, in Georgia, is the only property I have out there. The rest of them are by me. They're, you know, they're upstate. So I'm able to go visit. When I go, when I take a trip, it's a whole day. It's, you know, sometimes might be overnight. And I my properties are like practically like 15, 20 minutes away from each other. So again, that comes in handy when I have to send someone to do work for me. And I have like multiple issues with two, I can tell, oh, and they know, my handyman, they know where, where my properties are. Oh, they're like, oh, I'm going to go to the Blue House today. Oh, I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to go to 8th Ave, you know. So we, we have things on lock already. But you also have to help yourself by not having your properties all over the place. Because for every time, it's like spread out without any clear strategy. First of all, you are going to burn yourself out. You're going to hate it eventually because you're, you know, and when you have multiple issues going on, so the one in Wyoming has a, an issue you need to take care of. The one in Tennessee has another issue. Here you are running all, all over the place as opposed to if you had them in a concentrated area that was very easy to get to. So again, I just wanted to um, put that tip out there. That's so good. Well. That's so good. Okay. Now, let, so you had to, you were early in, in making the shift to, I need to be an investor. But for those where this is a mindset shift for them, this is especially, we talked earlier about just being a woman and we know this is still a very male dominated industry. And for many of us, we were told, get the job, get the, get the money. And that's what you're supposed to do. So this may be a different conversation for a lot of people. When you get to work with um, your coach, your coach. And so you get to work with your clients. How do you help them overcome if they are still trying Trying to wrap their head around, I need to invest in real estate. 
even though I, I did what I thought I was supposed to do in getting this good job and making this money? Um, you know, I know a lot of people or some people are invested in their companies for 1K. They invested in, you know, through they invested in a brokerage, you invested in a Roth IRA, you have all these buckets, you know, the 401k, the Roth IRA, the brokerage, the 529, all of that. And that sounds great. But again, I it's important you remember that your job is feeding all of those buckets. If you ever lost your job, I promise you the last thing you're gonna be thinking about is no 401k. You're not going to be thinking about a Roth IRA, a brokerage, and a brokerage is not a tax sheltered account. The Roth IRA is tax sheltered again, but you, you can't take your monies in there or you can, you can take the contribution, um, um, but you can't take the profits or something like that. With the 401k, you can't even touch it at all until you hit a certain age. So here you are, and mind you, you have Nikki Haley. I don't mean to go political on you, but if the, the GOP wins, they do have plans to push the retirement age. Talk about it. 70 to 70 to 75, you know, they, they, they are in full support because that's how they're going to um, uh, provide social security. Again, there's a possibility that that could happen. And if that happens, well, guess what? You can't touch your money for an even longer period. So you need to invest in real estate to be able to make your, you see, that was the thing. Real estate was giving me cash right now in real time. I didn't have to wait 30 years to be able to take my money. What I'm looking forward to in 30 years, I paid off properties, paid off properties, not, you know, being a millionaire. A lot of people are going to tell you, well, if you invested $200 now, you're going to be a millionaire in 30 years, in 40 years, whatever time frame is. That's great. How about you try to be a millionaire now in half the time? With real estate, you can be, you could be a millionaire, right? You know, in half the time. Right now, as of December 31st, my net worth as an unmarried black woman in America is $900,000. As of December 31st, 900. By December 31st of this year, it should be a million dollars. So again, I don't have to, I'm in my 30s. I didn't have to wait, you know, till I was 60 to be a millionaire. You can be a millionaire with real estate much faster. 10 years of concentrated time. And please don't, don't make this complicated. If you're listening to me, all you need is one property every year. Make a promise to yourself. Don't take your, and that's why I coach people because I've seen the effect of that. There was a time I took my foot off the pedal because again, sometimes realization hits you at different times in your life. You don't take your foot off the pedal. You got to keep going. One property every year. If you can do two, great. But if you go with one property and see, see, if, if you're listening actively, if you're actively listening to this conversation, remember I told you, you need to buy a duplex, a triplex or a fourplex. So imagine buying, let's say a triplex once a year for the next five years, for the next seven years, for 10 years, and you've done your work. I tell you, once you hit a hundred K in annual revenue, and this is the part no one told us, once you hit a hundred thousand dollars in annual revenue, you've laid the groundwork for your retirement. You've laid the found, you've done the hardest work because the first hundred K is the hardest. If you can get there, you're on the move. You're practically insulated from the system. So, Start now, you know, your job is not, you can't pass down the job. You cannot pass down the job. Stop hanging on to the job. Use the job is using you. Use the job as well. Use the income from the job to start investing into an asset type that's not directly tied to your job. I'm not afraid of losing my job today. And I don't say that, you know, to, to be funny or to, to be any type of way, but that's just the truth. I'm not reliant on the income from my job anymore. Right now, I get paid. My properties pay me to live, to do whatever I want to do. I've traveled. I've gone to different places, Hawaii, Thailand, Portugal, Malaysia. I've been there. 
If you're in a position right now where you have to buckle down and save aggressively, please do so. If you can cut back on anything, because I know a lot of the girls get upset, you know, we're not doing our nails, we don't, we're not doing our head, the, the uh, you know, red bottom shoes, all of those things are sweeter. All of, you can, those things are more enjoyable when you have assets that pay for that. For now, if you're in a season in your life where you have to buckle down, then do so. Save that your, you know, save that thirty thousand, forty thousand, twenty, whatever it is, to get your first property. The job, jobs come and go, but the longer you wait to buy real estate, nobody could have anticipated, nobody could have predicted how real estate, like how the market would have turned out today. Nobody would have all those, you know, dirt cheap properties and properties we saw everywhere. No longer here, no longer here. So you have to do what you need to do right now to start investing in real estate. You invest for yourself to be able to live well. You invest for your children so that you have assets that you can pass down to them. You invest in real estate so that you have money in real time. 30 years from now, you're gonna be looking, you know, looking forward to paid off properties. You're going to have, rents are gonna go up. Rents will never stay the same. Rents will never stay the same. I remember what I was paying for rent back in the day and what it is right now. When I looked back in that neighborhood, I was like, oof, cha. No, rents are going to keep going up. So imagine being in a position where you have a paid off property. You're just paying taxes and insurance, which if you're a real estate investor, those things are tax deductible anyway. And you have, you're collecting more rent. I'll give you an example since, since we're here, because I like making the numbers very clear. On my second property, I, it's a duplex. It's a duplex. It's a three bedroom upstairs and a two bedroom downstairs. I remember when rents were like, like 700 for upstairs, which was a three bedroom and three and 600 for downstairs, so together 1300. Today, rents upstairs is 1450 and rents downstairs, yes, is 1421. I have the, I have the checks, because I'm in my office right now, I have the checks, I could pull it up and show it. That is 24, what is that? 1421 and 1450, I think 28 or 29, somewhere there, 2900, if you multiplied it, like, do that math. 13, it's practically two times what it once was. So, and another 10 years from now, it's going to be even more. Going to be even more. A lot of us are afraid to invest in real estate. Well, here's another story. There's a property I purchased for $75,000 um, back in, it was a rehab back in 2021. We fixed it up. I, for thirty seven thousand, so I purchased for seventy five thousand, fixed it up for thirty seven thousand five hundred dollars. I pulled out twenty thousand dollars at refinance, and today that property is worth two fifty. Wow! Wow! It's worth two fifty. Mm -hmm. Purchased seventy five k, fixed up for thirty seven five hundred. I pulled out twenty thousand dollars at the time, and the property is worth two fifty. Upstairs is rented for for fifteen seventy five, and downstairs is rented for sixteen hundred. That's three thousand one hundred and twenty five dollars on a duplex. Multiply that by twelve. That's about I believe thirty eight thousand. I mean, the math is mathing. My math, math. <laughs> My, for my students, I show you everything. You got to get to your first 100K. Tiffany, it's sobering. Yeah, it's so, I have a bachelor's. I have, a, I have an associate. I have a bachelor's. I have a master's degree. I have over 200 credits on my transcripts. Yeah, and I graduated with $26,000 in student loan debt, which real estate helped me pay off as well. Cha-ching. Um, Yet through those classes, no one, not, no, I mean, the school, the system, whatever, all I needed to hear was get to your first 100K in real estate. Like it's sobering when you sit down to think about it, how we were never prepared to face the real world. We were just prepared to work. We were just, you know, give it, you know, educated enough to get a nine to five. That's how it is. Everything else you have to figure out. You have to, it's a, a whole different school. 
you have to self, you know, pay for your own self-development. But other than that, the school system doesn't teach you how to build wealth per se. All I needed was someone to tell me, get to your first 100K in real estate and you've laid the groundwork for your retirement. You have nothing to to, um, worry about anymore. So you got to tap in, lock into housing, lock into real estate. You can always invest in the stock market. You can always go. There are always stocks. I'm here preaching about real estate and I don't want you guys to think that, you know, I didn't, I don't have any stock accounts. I do, but I invested in that after my second property. So I finally started taking my 401k, you know, kind of seriously when I had real estate locked in. So you can always circle back. You can always go back to it. There, There's always going to be stocks for $70 for 100 Guess what? You can invest more into the stock market when you earn more. How about that? You can invest more when you earn more. If, you, uh, if you're listening to me and you consider yourself to be low income, your first thing is increasing your income. And here's why I chose real estate. Remember I said America will keep you working around the clock if you're not careful. The 10 jobs, the five jobs, working all over the place. I didn't want that for, for myself. I did not want that for myself. And real estate was what allowed me to have a job and have an asset. So a lot of things are happening in, at once with real estate. Here you are, you have a side hustle. You're now earning more. You're increasing your net worth. You're building equity. You're paying down, you know, someone else is paying down your debt. You have an asset that you can leverage. You have an asset that appreciates. Like again, so much is, so that one door is leading to so many opportunities for you. And that's why I will always be a strong advocate of owning your own property as a woman, as a black woman, as whatever, buy real estate, own rental properties. It will shield you from paying taxes. I've had over a hundred K in tax deductions over the years as well. Real estate keeps shielding me from, I don't pay more than my fair share of taxes. I'm like, Uncle Sam, please go tax, you know, go tax the basils and, you know, the go tax the rich folks. But you see, surprisingly, the rich folks have businesses. They have real estate as well. All those Amazon, you know, whether the warehouse and stuff, they're getting tax credits for that. So you have to start playing the game like wealthy people do. You have to stop sitting on the sidelines. What you need is knowledge. What you need is structure. What you need is strategy. What you need is support. All the YouTube videos, I mean, podcasts, yes, that's great. Those are excellent resources, but you also need mentorship. Find someone, you know, get into, if you wanted to reach out to me, you can. If you want to sign up for my course, which I know we're going to talk about um, soon, you can always sign up for that, but you need guidance. It's because you have no, no real guide. Um, that's why you're fear, uh, afraid. That's why you're terrified. And also I need you to, because it's important for me to say this. A lot of times, a lot of us get scared. So here's the property that you're supposed to purchase, but then a lot of us don't want to pay for our own learning because you know, for whatever reason, oh, I don't have the money, it costs too much. First of all, as someone who has seen how it was back in the day and also seeing what it is now, trust me when I say you're not attending three-day $20,000 seminars anymore. You're not. These days, everything is much more affordable to you. And also, you have to start understanding value. You see, I remember when I purchased my third property and I spent like $37,500 and I And, you know, at the time I had just paid off my student loan. So it's like I was spending, I felt like I was spending a lot of money. Um, I had just paid off 20, I paid my student loan off in in one lump sum. So I paid it off monthly, monthly. And then one day on my birthday, I decided to give myself a birthday gift. I was like, you know what, just pay this damn thing off and and move on. I'm sorry, I cursed. Um, Just pay this thing off. (laughs) Yeah. And I, and I paid it off and I moved on. So it was $20,000 I ended up paying as a lump sum. And then shortly after that, I saw my third properties, put in an offer, it got accepted, and all in, I had to pay like $37,500. And I remember driving home, and I, and I was so afraid. You know, I was like, did I do the right thing? Did I, did I, you know, did I do the right thing? Well, guess what? 
it's been, that was back in 2018. It's been, what, five, six years. I have recouped over 37,000, like, I don't even think of that money anymore. When I'm getting my tax deduction, do you think I'm worried about it? Like, I have made, even in one year alone, one year alone, that property, that's my third property, rents at 13, 1300 uh, upstairs and 1375 downstairs. So that's 26,000, 20, 20, $2,675 multiplied by that by 12. That's one third of $100,000. Somewhere there is about $33,000, $34,000. I have, so imagine making that. So you're spending $37,000 one time to make. Thirty-eight or thirty-seven thousand uh, dollars multiple times, like over and over every year. Again, so when you pay for your own learning, you're paying for that one time to reap the benefits over the lifetime. It's important that we understand how to value these things so that you don't lock yourself out of opportunities because you're too worried about the cost. You will always, if you are, if you are connected to someone of value, you will always get your return in multiple folds. So don't lock yourself out. Many coaches these days, they tend to have a payment plan. They, you, we've, we've put stuff on layaway for things that are, you know, trinkets, how much more the value for your own education. You've paid, you haven't paid $100,000 for a master's degree and you're still working a job that's paying you 90K. You like, again, value. What is the value of an asset that you purchased today that you can pass down to your kids? I mean, what is that in value to you? So it's important that you, you, you know, you adjust your mindset a little to understand that, yes, this is what you're paying to get into the room, to get information, to get, not just in, because a lot of people say, oh, I'm just getting information. No, you're not just getting information. You're getting structure. You're getting strategy. You're getting support, something that, you know, all these other resources cannot give you. Place value, connect with a mentor of value, and you will get the return on your investment in multiple folds. My student right now, she has two properties. Some of my students have purchased properties for themselves. Some have purchased as rental. My student has two. Right now, she's um, looking into her third property. And every, you know, every now and then she's like, um, coach, I'm so grateful that you, you know, that I got into this when I did. Because she went back to the same market where she purchased her first two. And there's nothing there for the same price that she purchased for. There is nothing there. So every time you wait, every time you, you, you know, you try to cut corners and, and here's the truth about real estate, you are going to pay one way or the other. That's the thing. If you don't pay in mentorship, you will learn the harder way when you, you know, you, you know, decide to dive in and go it on your own. And I, I don't say this to try to scare anyone, but again, having a guide, having mentorship, Someone who can give you direction. Sometimes information is the currency of time. Information is the mm. currency of time. Mm -hmm. So information is the currency of time. That is good. Yes, that's so good. And one of the things my mentor says that I really want to make sure people don't miss is that you plant the seed once but you reap the harvest for a lifetime. And that is what we, that is what we do when we buy mentorship programs and we participate because you're learning that information once, but you continue to reap because once you learn it, you can't unlearn it. And so my, one of my favorite principles that I live lies of the law of exposure. Once you've been exposed, you can't be unexposed. And so when I was exposed to real estate, I can't unsee the way people are winning. And so I am committed to this. So thank you so much for your, knowledge and sharing your experience about how you have been able to y'all did y'all hear a hundred thousand listen y'all see the math y'all see what she's talking about we about to be a millionaire in 2024 we claim it million what so let's talk about that seed though let's talk about the seed because you do have a, a coaching program and so i don't want to have people miss the opportunity y'all have heard the power the knowledge tell people about your brand your coaching program what what does that entail for them so it's an eight-week um, program, 
And in the program, I teach you my two strategies. Whether you're buying property turnkey or you're buying as a rehab, I teach you both. In the first two weeks, um, we go over your personal finances. So you're going to see, even right now, some properties are coming back on the market a lot. I remember looking at the Connecticut market, and there's a lot of back on the markets. And the number two reasons why property come back on the properties come back on the market is due to financing. The first is inspections. Maybe you know the property has issues, and you know it just didn't work out that way. But the next reason is because financing fell through. So. People get their pre-approvals and they think they're ready. And, you know, that's the pre-approval. When you get in with the underwriter, you know, things start revealing themselves. So the first couple of weeks, we um, talk about your personal finances. And there are bonuses in the course. Like the number one, I would say, my um, the first bonus you're going to get is setting up your business. So a lot of, you know, the, the LLC, <laughs> the LLC's got our, got our people in the chokehold. <laughs> <laughs> the LLC's got our people in the chokehold. Um, you know, and they always ask me, should I buy a property in, you know, in my, my um, should I put my, my property under an LLC or should I put it in my name? And Well, you don't have to worry about that. The first week I'm going to get you right, you're going to set up your S Corp, not an LLC. You're going to set up your S Corp. That's really the key to saving on your taxes because it's a, um, you're not taxed twice. You're not, ta it's not a double taxation because if you're a C Corp, you're taxed twice. I don't want to get too uh, technical on that. On your first week, as a bonus to you, you're going to set up your own S Corp so that you can decide to buy under your S Corp and also or not buy under your S Corp. But beyond that, it's also for people who decide to get into real estate through rehabs. If you're buying a property that needs a rehab, there's no lender that's gonna lend to you personally. They're gonna lend to your business. So that's why I set that up in the first week. And since you're filling out a couple of paperwork and you're dealing with the government, you know, like file, filling out forms, it takes, it takes about 30 to 45 days for them to get back to you. So that's why I set it in week one so that you can get that started while we go through the course and, you know, the time's ticking with um, sending in your paperwork and then getting a response to you. By week two, we're going to figure out how many properties it's going to take for you to match the income from your job. That is crucial because there's levels to this real estate stuff. You're going to figure out how many properties is it going to take to match the income from your job and also exceed it. While, you know, some of us don't like our nine to five and your pay might be 90,000, the job might actually be paying you in reality, let's say 110, even though on paper you're at 90 because all your benefits, all your, you know, so yes, you're going to match the income from your job and then how many more it's going to take to exceed that um, level. Um, by week three, we get into turnkey analysis. The price point at which you enter, you see in real estate, you make your money when you buy, not when you sell. You make in the buy. So the going in at the right price is crucial. A lot of people don't know their numbers. A lot of people are using hope as a strategy. Hope is not a strategy. You need to know what it is. You need to know if the property is going to make sense for you. And we do an activity in week three that's called good deal or bad deal. I give you all the tools you're going to need. So my calculate, um, the calculators that I use I share that with you. Um, you'll have all the tools you need to determine if a property makes sense, but you also bring the property as a group activity. You bring the property to the group and then we can decide, I'm going to you know, ask you questions. Why did you pick this property? Where is it? How much are the rents? What are the expenses? Because I need you to know what you're getting. I don't want you to just, you know, go out on the fly. So we're going to play a game of good deal, bad deal, where you bring your property um, and we analyze it together. So that's week three. Week four, we get into rehabs, um, building a team for the rehab. Also knowing the numbers for rehabs because things work differently for turnkey versus rehab. By week five, week six, you know, you get familiar with the mortgage process. Again, some people might be renters and you've never been, you've never been exposed to the mortgage industry, like, you know, dealing with a lender and stuff like that. I teach you how to negotiate. 
negotiate for, um, to get the best rates. I teach you how to negotiate, even to have a winning offer with a seller these days. Um, what else? By week seven, by five or six weeks, week seven, we go into um, tenants and how to get tenants, how to handle your lease. I give you a lease in there. Between that lease was created by an attorney and that lease was created by an attorney and I think it cost me about $400 to get that lease. You're going to get that. The setting up your business, if you had to pay someone to set up your business for you, that's a $700 to $1,000 spend right there. So between the leases alone and the fact that you're going to set up your business, you've technically already covered the cost of the course. Technically, you've already covered everything. You've already gotten, you've already gotten great value in there. So again, everything I give you is repeatable. You learn the strategy it's repeatable. That I have repeated it. If you've listened actively to this podcast, I've practically given you strategies at every question uh, Tiffany has asked me. I've given you strategy already, and there's more in there once I give you the framework that you need to go. You need to go. Don't take your foot off the pedal. One property, or if you can swing two a year because you have it like that, great. The more, the better. But again, a lot of people get scared, you know, and they just, you know, one property every year for the next five, seven years. And I promise you, you're going to come out on top. And that's what my course preps you for. I give you the framework to building your first 100K in real estate. I love it, y'all. The details for that course will be in the description box. So be sure to, to click on that link if you are interested. You see the wealth of knowledge that Ogechi has, and she is going to walk you through this process for the entire duration of the program. And so definitely tap in if you are someone that is looking to get into your first or to your next property. This is a phenomenal community and a fantastic mentor to have on your on your side. Um, so before we wrap up, two things that I, we like to do. The first one, we like to do a little vision casting here on the Aid to Assets podcast. And so we know it's important to write the vision and make it plain. And so when you think about you and your business, what's going to be true when we watch this recording a year, three years from now, your choice, what, what's life going to be like for you and your real estate business? Well, I'm definitely going to be a millionaire by then. <laughs> Let's start Period. With that. <laughs> Let's start with that. I'm going to I'm going to be a millionaire with that. Um but next, I mean, being a millionaire that's a flex and and that's great for me, but more so impact. Um I don't the feeling when my student told me she bought her first property, when she bought her second property, she has two kids. And her message to me said, my kids are secure. So one, each property for, you know, there's a property for each kid. And I was like, this is just because I decided to step out. So it, it dawned on me that a lot of people and, you know, we all have gifts and your gifts is making a way for someone else. So the sooner you, I stepped into my own gift, I was able to connect and help others. So I think for me, the vision is to have my students succeeding. Please buy more properties than me. The, the more you buy, the better for me. It's a testament to, you know, to my, you know, your success is my success. Let me put it that way. It's a testament to how good of a mentor I am. I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not one to brag a lot about, you know, this and that. Even on my page, I don't even share a lot. Maybe I should get, I should really get into sharing a lot of my <laughs> behind the scenes. So for one, yes, by the time you're listening today, by the time this recording as I would have closed on my on my eight additional doors by then we should put me um, at a net worth of a million dollars but more importantly I want to have my students succeeding I want people to feel more emotionally confident to buy their first properties I want my I want to wake up to messages that says coach I just bought another property I just put in an offer I just God, I'm on the contract. This property is here. Coach, I just bought a 10 unit building. I bought a five unit. I got my duplex. I've, you know, I have assets I can give to my kids. Those messages 
are messages that I want to receive. So for me, beyond building wealth for myself, I want to help other women. I want to help our community. I want more impact. And that is my that is my top prayer right now. My t- yeah, it's actually my top three prayers to have my students buy real estate, to have more of us own as a woman, as black people. We need to get out there. We need to own stuff. We need to shift our mentality um, from either consuming or just being fine with someone else taking, you know, be, uh, being fine with not owning assets. We got to get into the space of ownership. Ownership will cost you. Non-ownership will also cost you. Choose your costs. In order to grow, you have to be willing to give up something in exchange for your growth. I've had to do that so many times in my journey. And believe me, I am happy today. It was painful at the time. It was painful. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a single income earner. You know, one of the things... Now that I live in my own home and I was reflecting, even on my own financial traumas, is that since the age two, I've never been in a two-income household. Kind of sounds like a strange thing to say or, or acknowledge, but I've had to be the two-income. I am even probably the three-income at this point, all without, <laughs> all without, you know, working myself to death, just working round the clock. I have assets that do the heavy lifting for me today. Most of my wealth is in real estate. I have stocks that pay me dividends. I have rents that I collect today. I still have a job that relatively isn't stressful for me at this point because I don't work weekends and you know, I don't, we don't do all of that stay, you know, stay till 6 p.m. or, or um, you know, you, you have something to prove by spending more time at work. You know, my life is relatively the way that I want it to be right now. So another six months from now, one month from now, when you hear this, when you listen to this podcast sometime in April, I should have closed on my eight, eight doors. Yeah, two properties, two four unit properties. I, and you, by then you can check out my Instagram page. You'll see all of that on there. By the end of the year, I should be a millionaire. And then years from now, my students just succeeding is all I really, really want for one savvy dollar. I- I love it. Oh my goodness, it's yours. It's already claimed and received. Um, now, you mentioned one savvy dollar, so that's the second thing. Tell people how they can get in touch with you, where they can find you, and this amazing community that you have as well that you're growing online. You can find me all my handles at one savvy dollar. The website is one savvy dollar.com. It's two V's. So O N E S A V V Y D O L L A R one savvy dollar Instagram one savvy. I'm not really active on Twitter. I do share some of my thoughts there, but that's not really my space. You can between, uh, Instagram and my website, perfect place to find me. Perfect. Y'all definitely make sure that you go and and follow One Savvy Dollar. You'll probably see me in the comments um, because the posts are always so good. And so there's some great conversation as well as some great lessons. And I love how you'll bring in situations that people are dealing with to see how others would respond. That's my favorite. Those are my favorite posts. So I just want to shout those out because I love them. And there was I know there was one recently where it was like going in an ex-boyfriend wanted one of the girls to help him become an investor but y'all it was crazy like I need to go find that post so I can link it but it was like the ex-boyfriend wanted the girl to be to help him get into real estate she was already an investor but she he didn't want her to do any other deals what it was a mess but I live for it I love it yeah. oh, oh yeah oh, yes that was the one really? I- that was crazy Oh, I said the, like, aud- no, the audacity for me. It's the audacity, okay? <laughs> oh, those are definitely some of my favorite posts. So I had to tell you that those are some of my favorite. Or, or the other one where the wife was, the fiance was mad that yeah. the hus- or soon-to-be husband had yeah. rental property and didn't want to sell them so she no. could go on vacation. Girl. Okay. And that- <laughs> like... <laughs> 
It's so what fun. It's so fun. You just get to hear yeah, real life conversations fun. of how people are dealing with money and real estate. And so I live. And so thank you so much for the space that you create online and the way in which you pour into people to help them to be to create their own journey and path in real estate. And thank you again so much for just sharing your knowledge and experience here with us on the Aid to Assets podcast. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you for having me. It's always a wonderful, wonderful feeling for me when people invite me to um, share with their communities. So I really, really appreciate this. And I, I thank you. I wish you as well, you know, a lot of success, more guests, more everything, more more 2024 is the year of more yes. more blessings more money more deals coming through you know and i thank you i thank you for giving me um this space as well i receive all of that well y'all this has been another amazing episode of the aid to assets podcast we can't wait until we see you at the closing table bye Thank you for tuning in to another insightful episode of Aid to Assets. Remember, your journey from nine to fiver to successful real estate investor is within reach. Keep learning, keep growing, and keep investing in your future. If you'd like to know more, connect with me on Instagram at Aid to Assets. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Until next time.